By the 1880s, the president was hardly seen as the most powerful man in the nation. Big business, or captains of industry, such as John D. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, and Andrew Carnegie, had much more influence over American politics. The 1884 presidential election became one of the dirtiest campaigns in history. The Democrats nominated Grover Cleveland, a pro-business bourbon Democrat who was opposed to high tariffs, free silver, and inflation. Cleveland was known as Grover the Good as he was devoted to cleaning corrupt government, but he did have a skeleton in his closet. Cleveland had a child out of wedlock. He admitted this to the public, which forgave him due to his honesty. Cleveland's opponents attempted to capitalize on his illegitimate child born out of wedlock by questioning Cleveland's morality. They developed a poem that went, Ma, Ma, where's my pa? But Cleveland's supporters countered with, Going to the White House, ha, ha, ha. In the election, the Republicans countered with Maine Governor James G. Blaine. Some suspected Blaine of railroad corruption, a major issue in that day. Democrats went after Blaine by chanting, Blaine, Blaine, James G. Blaine, the continental liar from the state of Maine, attempting to discredit Blaine's morality as well. Cleveland won the election and became the 22nd president. He was honest, but not proactive, a common trait in that day. He saw his job as just stopping bad things from happening. He would do this by using his veto power. Cleveland vetoed twice as many bills as his predecessors combined. He was honest, a hard worker, and an example of self-reliance. He answered his own phone, his own doorbell, and he wrote his own speeches. He also studied all legislation himself. Cleveland was a bachelor when he won the presidency, but he was secretly courting 20-year-old Francis Folsom. Once in the White House, he proposed marriage and became the first president to be married in the White House. As the public was fascinated with Francis Cleveland, the president went back to work as the safeguard of the U.S. Treasury by using his veto power. He vetoed bills he saw as drains on the U.S. Treasury. He said while the people should support the government, the government should not support the people. This was a time when many were starting to look to the government for support. The Interstate Commerce Commission was established in 1887 to regulate the railroad rates. This was the first instance of business regulation in the United States. Railroad regulation was a big deal in the late 1800s. One of the major bills Cleveland vetoed was the Texas Seed Bill, in which Congress appropriated money to Texas due to a drought. Cleveland vetoed the bill and urged charities to raise the money. As a result, the charities raised more money than would have been given by the government. The Grand Army of the Republic had been formed by Civil War veterans. They wanted to increase pension benefits. Cleveland vetoed what he considered fraudulent pensions and that lost him support from veterans going into the 1888 election. Grover Cleveland was a proponent of limited government, but he would lose in 1888.